Today on Sci Guys, dying flowers for Mother's Day. Welcome to Sci Guys. Today we've got a special episode for Mother's Day, which comes up in May. We're going to be dying flowers using transpirational pole. It's a miracle of science. Ooh, it's actually just science. <laughs> The mechanism in today's episode is transpirational pull. Transpirational pull occurs when the leaves, buds, or petals of a plant lose water through photosynthesis or evaporation. This loss of water results in a drop of pressure, which causes an upward pull on the water that's in the roots and the stem of the plant. The equipment and ingredients you're going to need for this episode include, obviously, white flowers, preferably chrysanthemums or carnations. Some scissors. Some food coloring. And a glass container of some kind to put our flowers into. The safety equipment we're going to need for this episode is just a lab coat or apron to protect from any spills and splashes, especially the food coloring which could stain your clothes. We're also going to be using a knife or scissors to cut the stem of our flower, so ask an adult for help. The first step is to add warm water to your glass. We're going to be using about two cups of water. Now you're going to want to add food coloring to that water. You have to add 20 to 30 drops for every half cup of water that you'll be using. Once you have this mixed in and prepared, we're ready to get our flower set up. In order to prepare our flower, we just want to trim the stem so that the flower won't be too large sitting in the container. We're just going to cut it at an angle right above one of the joints. Now we want to cut it at an angle because now the flower won't bottom out when it's sitting inside the container and it allows for more water to enter it. Like so. Initially, we tried using a purple food coloring to dye our flowers. Unfortunately, it looks like only the blue pigment from the dye was absorbed into the flower. So what we decided to do was try again with just a primary blue food coloring. As you can see, we got much better results. It can take between 24 and 48 hours to fully dye your plant a bright color. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. All living plants require both water and nutrients to survive. Although some moisture can be absorbed directly through the leaves, the infrequency of rain in many environments makes this method impractical. Soil, however, not only retains moisture, but contains the nutrients plants require to grow, making them an ideal medium to support plant life. Since a significant portion of most plants exist above the soil, they had to develop some method of transporting both water and nutrients to their leaves. This is accomplished through two different structures, the xylem for water and the phloem for nutrients. The xylem of a plant transports water passively, meaning it doesn't directly expend any energy to move the water upward. This is accomplished through two processes that work in tandem. Firstly, photosynthesis and evaporation in the leaves cause the upper part of the plant to lose water, generating negative pressure inside the plant. The second process is osmosis in the roots, which pulls in water from the surrounding soil generating positive pressure at the bottom of the plant. Together, the positive pressure from the roots absorbing water and the negative pressure of the leaves losing water causes the water to move up the xylem and the stem from the roots and into the leaves and petals of our plant. Although our flowers don't have their roots anymore, photosynthesis and evaporation provide enough negative pressure to pull the colored water up the xylem, which is transferred and absorbed into the petals, dyeing our flower. Well, that's it for our Mother's Day episode on dyeing flowers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments below and subscribe for future updates. Also remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions related to science or about this episode, you can let us know in the comments below or message us on Facebook and we'll try to help you out as best possible. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Here at Sci Guys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, share a video or photo of them with us on our Facebook or Google Plus page. But remember to always ask your parents' permission before you share any photos or videos.